Hey everyone, Tony from TN3D Studio and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at Bevel for SketchUp, a brand new extension that I think everyone should try. Beveled edges can be found in everything today, from the latest technology to your favorite piece of furniture. Beveled edges add aesthetic and safety to everyday objects. And as 3D artists, our goal is to create real-life examples, which is why it is very important to add a bevel to your 3D objects. So in this video, we're going to review bevel for SketchUp. So first, let's install the plugin. You want to click that first link in the description for MindSightStudios.com. I recommend you try the extension for 15 days. Or if you're ready to make the investment, you can go ahead and purchase a full license. Next, you want to follow the instructions and fill in your contact information. Download the extension, which you can then install through the extension manager. Once you follow all of these steps, you should be able to see the bevel toolbar in your viewport. So first we have our main feature, which is the bevel tool. This is what you will use to add the round profile to your objects. Next, we have live bevel, which is like a non-destructive bevel modifier. It lets you edit groups and components while auto-generating bevel edges to the entire object. You also have an auto soften and smooth edge feature, an edge cleanup feature, and some general settings in case you want to modify a few preferences. So one of the first things you will notice while using this extension is how well its operation fits within the SketchUp modeling workflow. And it feels so natural like other SketchUp native tools, which make it very simple and fun to use. Let me show you how. So in the case of our end table here, if I wanted to add a bevel to the top surface, I can select the top circle has my edge and activate the bevel tool. This also locks that selection in, as you can see. And now I can pick a reference point to drag and set the distance. Notice how you get this orange highlight, which acts as a preview to the bevel effect. From here, you can click again to confirm the distance at eight segments. And if you zoom in close enough, you can confirm that this bevel does indeed have eight segments. As you can see, it's actually very simple and the more you do it, the more familiar you get used to the operation. But let's repeat this with the bottom circle. So in the same way, I'm going to select my circle, activate bevel, and instead of the click and drag, I'm going to double click to repeat and apply the last setting. So this is going to be the same distance and the same number of segments. And this is just another way to get things done faster. So moving over to the legs, this time I will activate the bevel tool first and see how we can make multiple selections in the middle of the operation. So with the bevel tool activated, I can hover over an edge and I will get this green highlight over my selection. Similarly, you can hover over a face and it will highlight all the connected edges. And likewise, if you hover over vertex and it will select all the edges that connect at that corner. So I will select one edge and let's say this is my selection for now. And at this point, let's say I still want to add more to my selection. You can hold the control key. You will see a plus icon. And with this, you'll be able to add more edges to the selection. So I will add a few more. And this is now my new selection. Now I am fine with most of these edges, but let's say I want to remove some edges. In order to do that, you need to hold the shift key. You will see a plus minor icon because this key has a double function to add and remove selections. So to subtract, select all the edges with the red highlight to remove from your selection.
So now you can pick a reference point and this is the preview of my beveling effect. And at this point, if you're still not sure of your selection, you can press escape once and you are still able to add and remove to your selection. So this shows how flexible you can be as far as selecting your edges throughout the operation. Okay, so let's finish this by adding a quarter inch to my offset distance with six segments. And if I wanted to change the number of segments, I can use the up and down keys. Or I can just type a number and hit enter. Also keep in mind that the number of segments is what allows you to create the different types of profile. So I'm referring to chamfer, bevel, and fillets. Now let me explain the difference within the context of using this extension. Now every SketchUp object you create will have a sharp edge, and that is the most basic profile it can have. Now while that has its benefits, if you're modeling towards creating 3D renders, you know it leads to very unrealistic results. Now chamfer is when you connect two perpendicular surfaces with one segment that's usually at about 45 degrees. So when you set a value of 1 for your segments, and you'll be able to create a chamfered edge. Now bevel on the other hand, you still have one segment, but instead of connecting two perpendicular surfaces, you're connecting two parallel surfaces. Now fillet is when you actually have a round profile. So there are enough segments to create a round corner. Now, before we move over to the live bevel feature, which is the next best thing about this plugin, they've also included an auto soften and smooth edge feature, which is very similar to the SketchUp native tool. So first, let's open our preferences so we can take a look at the settings. And this feature basically softens the selected edges in any group or component based on the settings that you have here. So I'm going to leave everything as they are. I'll select a couple of edges and faces. Activate auto soften. And you can see how these edges are now smooth. So let's undo real quick. Select the entire object. Repeat auto soften. And now all the edges are affected. If we look at our preferences, we're going to see the angle setting. And right now I have it set to 35 degrees. This basically means that all the faces forming at 35 degrees or less will be affected. If we take a look at our group, most of the edges on the bevel are likely less than 35 degrees. However, you do see some faces that are connected on 90 degrees that are not affected. So if I change this angle setting to 90 degrees or more, let's say 95, and run auto soften, you can see how that affects the entire group. Now the smooth soft edge affects the shading of all the soft edges. If you pay attention to this area, when the setting is enabled, you get a consistent gradient across the entire surface. And when the setting is disabled, you'll be able to notice the traces of all the edges. And when you do a side-by-side -side comparison, I guess you can tell a very noticeable difference. Likewise, we also have the smooth bevel borders, which works on edges between the bevel and the original shape. With this feature enabled, you can see a smooth transition between the original shape and the beveled edge. And with the feature disabled, you see a noticeable difference between the bevel and the original shape. Next, we have clean edges. I really like this feature because it's a very efficient cleanup tool. So sometimes you may convert a model from object format to SketchUp, or you might download something from the 3D warehouse. 
and you will come across models like this with way too many edges than it needs to. So in this case, the model needs to be optimized before its bevel. If you try to bevel this, it may work, but most of the times you will get an error message like this. So this is where clean edges is very useful to remove those coplanar and split edges and optimize your 3D object for beveling. So I will select my entire object and with one single click, I can remove all those edges and proceed to bevel my object. So here's a little before and after. Now the next big feature of this plugin is the live bevel. This feature activates a live bevel modifier or for your group or component and applies the bevel settings in real time. So here we have a very simple cube that I will use as an example and when you activate the live bevel, you can see that all the edges are affected based on our live bevel settings. So at a first glance, you will see that our cube has a bevel effect. And if you look closer, you will see a proxy outline around our cube. And this is the object we're going to modify. Now, if we take a look at our settings, these are settings we are already familiar with. So here you can set the number of segments. Keep in mind that while using live bevel, the higher the number of segments, the slower the response. Here you can set the edge offset. You can enter a specific distance. Or you can use the edge offset tool. So let's try to make something out of our cube. So here you can see that as I push and pull, create new corners and angles and add different shapes to my object, you can see that the bevel is applied to all the corners in real time. And while you are in live bevel, you can still select single or multiple edges to add a more unique bevel. We also have a couple of visual settings or preview modes. You can switch between beveled mode, which will show you the beveled object. You also have proxy, which will show you the generic object without the bevel. Or you can choose to see both with an option to control the opacity of the beveled object. And here we also have the smooth bevel borders that we saw before. This option also comes in handy when you have more complex shapes. And you'll notice that you may come across some weird artifacts in your model, such as this one. So in situations like this, you can disable this setting so you can get rid of these weird artifacts. So now that we're done with the live bevel, hopefully this is a nice door handle. I have three options. I can simply press escape. This is going to keep my object as a non-destructive object, which means I can always reactivate live bevel and make more changes. Two, we can commit to all of these changes and make them permanent. So SketchUp is going to convert all the bevel and from here we won't be able to make any more changes. Or three, we can choose to remove all the bevel changes that we've done. We will end up with a proxy object without the bevel. Overall, bevel is an extension that does its job extremely well. It's fun and very easy to use. And it's extremely useful when adding different levels of details. So this can mean your architectural walls, your interior furnitures, and much smaller objects like sinks and door handles. So be sure to click the links in the description. These are affiliate links, so thanks in advance for supporting the channel. As always, give this video a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification. As always, I'll see you guys next time. But if you're looking for free extensions that can still improve your workflow, be sure to check the video on the screen.